Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. I'm here with a guest, a special guest all the way from our Nordic team, uh, the global research team in the Nordic region, Mr. David Jacobi. David is a senior security researcher uh, specializing in around web, web application, penetration testing, all kinds of uh, important security issues. And I brought David here today to talk about uh, security in the Linux Unix ecosystem. Uh, there's this perception that Windows is insecure and Linux is very secure. Is that uh, reality or is that in your mind a myth based on, based on your research? If you would ask me, it's absolutely a myth. Because, but if you would ask, for example, a system administrator, they would say Linux is so much more secure than Windows. But the problem with Linux is that they're, in most cases, they're excluded in, in patch routines, they're excluded from the normal routines in the network, mm -hmm. just stand, stand alone machines that's just you know, out there somewhere. Right. And another thing is that people, people imagine that you don't need antivirus or some kind of protection against malicious code mm -hmm. on the Linux system because there's no, no such thing as virus for, right, for Linux. Right. But it's wrong. You just need to think different. You know? There is malicious code against the Linux system in the form of backdoors, PHP backdoors, rootkits, right. exploit code. So I wanted I want to, to, to go through those and, and explain those yeah. in a little more detail. What are some of the major uh, security threats on the Linux platform? Can you just go into a little more details in some of these backdoors, PHP backdoors? And well, one of the problems is that the Linux server is also used in a different way than, for example, a Windows client. Mm -hmm. The Windows clients, they interact with all kinds of different servers every single day. So you sit uh, on your laptop and you check your email, you browse the web and so on. And mm -hmm. it's most likely a Linux server. And the Linux servers could be a web server, for example, and the web servers could be exploited by some kind of vulnerability, and that will result in that someone will upload this PHP right. backdoor. It's a piece of code that allows the attacker to gain access to the system and then do whatever he wants. Right. And, and that in itself makes the Windows ecosystem a lot more insecure, because a, a, uh, a lot of some of these things you're talking about yeah. is actually used to spawn additional attacks. Talk a little bit about how uh, you know, how insecurity on Linux platform affects the rest of the ecosystem. As I mentioned before, you can have your, your Mac laptop or Windows laptop and you're out browsing the web every single day. And let's say that, I don't know how many websites you search for every day, maybe it's a thousand, ten thousands. But you can sit in your closed environment and interact with so many different servers. And what if one of those servers was, was serving malicious code mm -hmm. and infect your little protected Windows network? Right. Then you you could you know you, you could get infected with uh, within your ecosystem by just interacting with other you know nodes or other other ecosystems in, in the world or out on right. the web. Why is it that there's that this this perception is so different? Is it a user education thing? Is it uh, is it more along the lines of like you said earlier, system administrators just being much more comfortable you know living in a Linux world? Why, why is there this perception that if, if, if as you're saying, uh, you know, the Linux platform presents a, a, a considerable threat, why do we have this perception versus reality issue? Because most people think, w w when you say the word malicious code, people will think about Trojans and they will think about file infectors. And you, and you don't really have that problem within the Linux operating system mm -hmm. or any other alternative operating system. But you still have the concept of malicious code. Mm -hmm. And you can have malicious code within the Linux system targeting, for example, the Windows network, right. such as a drive-by download. You know, the malicious code needs to be stored somewhere, and why not store it on a Linux server where you are most likely to put, the, put your malicious code on a server mm -hmm. that doesn't have you know, some kind of protection right, against right. malicious code. So you're more or less safe if you put your malicious code on a Linux, on server. A Linux server, even if it affects a Windows server or a Windows workstation. Right. Does the Linux ecosystem deal with some of the same uh, you know, headaches around that, that the Windows, uh, like a Windows sysadmin would have to deal with around patching, for instance? Is there, is there uh, you know, what I call the patch treadmill that li Linux uh, sysadmins need to stay on top of? And is it, uh, is it much more difficult to implement and apply patches for you know, what 
constitutes lots of security vulnerabilities that comes up all the time. It is a problem because on Linux operating systems or Unix based operating system, you have a different security model than on Windows. You have the default permissions, directory permissions. You also have something called logical vulnerabilities. A logical vulnerability can be a, a vulnerability that only exists because of the specific configuration on the server and the functionality of your application. So mm -hmm. those two combined will actually result in in the application having a vulnerability. And you don't really have the same problem on Windows machines. Because on Linux machines you have you know, different file permissions and write permissions and execute and read write. And Do we have patch management uh, routines and patch management systems specialized, targeted towards Linux, the Linux ecosystem? Well, what you can do is, first of all, work with education. Make people, system administrators, aware that this is a problem. You need to think different when handling for mm -hmm. example, Unix-based operating systems. But you also need to have some kind of protection against malicious code, because that will detect not just viruses and trojans, but also exploit code and PHP backdoors mm -hmm. and all that stuff that does exist for the alternative operating systems as well. I mean, the security is not strongest than the weakest link. Right, right. And I want to end quickly with uh, some tips and advice that you may have for uh, Linux server administrators particularly, you talked about you know, malicious code being uh, geared for the tar end target that might be the Windows desktops, but the Linux server is where it's being hosted. What are the, you know, the top three things a Linux server administrator should absolutely pay attention to and stay on top of to keep his server of not course. necessarily secure, but you know, well, clean. Of course, one thing is patch management. Make sure that you, you have the latest security patches for all the known vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. But also work with auditing. I mean, it could be that you're running a, a homemade web application. Make sure in your Apache logs or whatever web server logs that you don't see attacks, continuously at attacks. Right. Also work with something called local hardening. Make sure that file di files, directories, the configuration is secure. Um, and don't work, you know, security can be, can be based on different levels. Make sure right. that you don't have too many levels, because then you, right. you cannot control it. So, log auditing, uh, patch management, system hardening. Local hardening, Local yeah. hardening. and if you, if you can, some protection against malicious code. Thank you very much, David. Thank you. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab.